Good morning and welcome everyone to this uh, very important press conference. Um, I am Desmond Smith, Chief Information Officer in the Department of Information and Public Relations to the Government of the Virgin Islands. And today we have uh, His Excellency the Governor and the Premier of the Virgin Islands, the Minister for Finance. And they'll be making some important statements relative to the updates of the territory in this mountain recovery in the passage of, since the passage of Hurricane Omar one month ago. And for that, we'd like to start with a statement from the Governor, His Excellency Augustus Jasper. Governor, please. Thank you very much. And uh, good morning, everybody. And apologies for starting uh, a few minutes uh, late. As you know, uh, tomorrow, Friday, the uh, October the 6th, marks one month since the devastating impact of Hurricane Irma across our beloved territory. I know the effects are still being felt by all of us, but the Premier and I have come together today to provide you with an update on major accomplishments to date and to also outline our intentions going forward. I returned from the United Kingdom on Tuesday, and after a few days away, I have observed noticeable improvements in the recovery process and I'm pleased to see this. The green shoots truly are growing back. Irma was the strongest ever observed hurricane in the open Atlantic, which directly hit the territory. The severity of the damage was of course extensive, and my thoughts and my prayers every single day still go out to all of those who have suffered. Despite the damages, we have made marked progress from September the 6th. And this was achieved as a result of the collective efforts of local, regional, and international partners who quickly responded to address urgent needs. Following the immediate humanitarian response, we are now in the recovery stage. And I want to accord our thanks to all neighbours, friends further afield, and fellow citizens of the United Kingdom and other overseas territories who have provided much needed support. Immediate response came from the United Kingdom and response support was provided on request from the Caribbean Disaster Emergency uh, Management Agency, SEDEMA through the Regional Response Mechanism, as well as the Pan American Health Organization, PAHO. The international community joined the regional support, which was led by DFID UK Aid, and supported by a number of non-governmental organizations. This support continues to be provided, and we are very grateful. Earlier this week, we welcomed a new rotation of police officers from the United Kingdom, who are supporting the excellent efforts of the Royal Virgin Islands Police Force to maintain law and order across the territory. The UK military have played an important role supporting the government efforts, but as we move fully into recovery and keep moving to a return to normal, it is right that the military move on the majority of their resource. The bulk of the military will leave over the next few days. A core team of specialist engineers will remain to support infrastructure repairs. RFA Mounts Bay is here now and will remain in the region until the end of the hurricane season, and she has been reinforced post Irma and Maria. The Royal Virgin Islands Police Force, who have done an excellent job, will continue to be supported by United Kingdom police officers and those from Cayman and Bermuda. The military assistance received helped to boost the efforts of BBI authorities to address a number of priority needs, which including providing relief supplies, restoring communications, supporting repairing utility infrastructure with BBI Electricity Corporation, along with critical facilities including schools, some of which have opened today. I give my heartfelt thanks to the military for their assistance. I also want to recognise the incredible work of DDM, Charlene Debray and her team, who, it's easy to forget, were working flat out since the tropical wave in early August. And more widely, I want to thank public servants in leading a rapid recovery, along with volunteers and the community. We have re-established government services, not only on Tortola, but also on sister islands. The Inland Revenue Department, the Labour and Immigration Departments, District Offices, BBI Post and Civil Registry and Passport Office have all now resumed services. In Jos van Dijk, electricity has been restored at the Government Building, which has enabled Customs, Immigration and the District Office to resume regular services there. On Anagada, it is estimated that power has been restored to approximately 40% of the settlement, and work is ongoing to restore electricity and water throughout the remainder of the island. I saw in, last week in Virgin Gorda the tremendous efforts from both public servants and the community as they recover there. The entire territory experienced the loss of electricity, water and access to communication for a period of time immediately following the impact from Irma. 
Progress is being made, but it's going to be a long job to get back to full recovery. Along with the areas identified on the sister islands, electricity has been restored in some areas on Tortola. And restoring utility <coughs> services for the entire territory is a priority for the Premier and my and all of Cabinet's ongoing recovery efforts. Businesses are reopening, ferries to sister islands and the US Virgin Islands are operating regularly. The airport is open to commercial flights, albeit on a limited basis. Irma's impact, though, was extensive, especially to the infrastructure for water, electricity and communications. Therefore, the, therefore, the full recovery of the territory will be a long-term process. Nonetheless, I encourage us all to continue to be resilient so that together we can rebuild stronger and better. This will be a long haul, but we will build back better. The Cabinet discussed recovery plans yesterday and will oversee the plans going forward. And I know the Premier will talk more about this. Finally, I wanted to mention the state of emergency. During the period <coughs> since Irma, we've had a state of emergency, largely to allow us to have in place a curfew. Throughout this state of emergency, we have prioritised rebuilding government, and decisions have been taken with Cabinet and Ministers responsible for their areas. My intention is to end the state of emergency as soon as possible. To do this, Cabinet agreed that we needed a separate curfew act to enable a curfew to continue as we restore vital services. The Premier will talk more about the Curfew Act, which he is taking to the House of Assembly today. And, subject to that, we aim to move out of a state of emergency later this week. As I end, I once again reiterate how proud I am of the fantastic community spirit and resilience I have seen across the Territory. The strength and dedication of communities, volunteers and public officers working in such difficult circumstances. And finally, our thanks to all those who supported us. In particular, the United Kingdom military, as the majority of them leave over the next days. We have made great progress, and we will continue to every single day as we build our recovery. Thank you. Thank you very much, Your Excellency, Governor Jasper, for your statements. Now we invite the Honourable Premier, Dr. Honourable Yerlander Smith, to make his statements. Thank you, and good morning. I'm pleased to join with the Governor Jasper in making statements on the current situation in the recovery of BBI from hurricanes Irma and Maria. Within six weeks, the territory has undergone three of its most significant and devastating disasters. With August 7 and 8 floods, as well as the historic passage of the two Category 5 hurricanes, Hurricane Irma on September 6 and Hurricane Maria on September 19. The damages to the territory are apparent and significant. To support the immediate needs of the territory, we identify the following areas as high priority areas for immediate attention. Utilities. We now have electricity in the corporate areas of Tortola and in parts of all of our sister islands. Construction, wholesale and retail trade and repair of motor vehicles, transportation and storage, information and communications, public administration and defense, key public services are resumed on all our islands. Education, orientation for high schoolers have started today, and some private schools have already opened and expanded the offerings to ensure all the territory students have access to an educational program. Human health and social work, debris, waste management, and remediation. Both public and private agencies have been assessing damages to our territory, and their findings so far show there has been significant damage to many sectors, including tourism, housing, wholesale, retail, roads, and utilities. Significant and sustained financing will be required to enable the territory to put in place the physical and environmental components necessary for individuals and businesses to drive the economic and social recovery needs for future growth. Business continuity has been an area of concentration for my office post Hurricane Irma. And I'm pleased that our financial services sector has virtually been uninterrupted and our commercial court is up and running temporarily sitting in St. Lucia. We do realize that the damage to our natural environment and our tourism properties and attractions will significantly impact our GDP as well as job opportunities for residents. Many of our tourism properties have already started to rebuild and at least two marinas have reported that they plan to have boats in the water before the end of the year. To immediately address rehabilitation of our local economy, 
have talked to three departments to identify opportunities to support local businesses during this time. The department has begun assessing businesses to see what support government can provide to ensure those opportunities are operational, providing job services and goods to the territory. Residents of the territory will be pleased to know that the government is diligently working with regional and international partners to plan the way forward. We already know they would like to conduct the rebuilding in two phases. The immediate response, which is focused on meeting humanitarian needs, clearing debris and restoring sufficient services to allow public services and businesses to restart. And the longer term reconstruction program will rebuild the territory in a manner that is consistent with our national development plans and covers rebuilding in all sectors of the economy. As we consider a plan moving forward, I look forward to a public dialogue as we seek to rebuild an even better Virgin Islands. Again, I want to recognize and thank the men and women working and volunteering with the National Emergency Operating Center, as well as essential, as well as our essential services personnel for their tireless and hard work. May we all continue to remain BVI strong. I'd also like to um, join in the governor in observing, noting that um, we intend to have an end to the state of emergency and um, we, can, we can have we replace that with um, a curfew act. We believe that the curfew act is important and it's important to have a curfew in place for a little while longer so that we can re re maintain law and order so that businesses particularly can feel safe to open as late as 10 o'clock in the evening or whenever we choose to set it at that time for the curfew. Right? And so today we're going to, in the House of Assembly, we're going to be looking and hoping to hopefully passing a curfew act to permit our curfews to take place without having a state of emergency in place. Thank you very much, Premier. Um, now, the, the press here, the floor is open for you to ask questions, and you can identify yourself and the organi organizations you represent. Good morning. Zan Lewis, ZBVI Radio. Premier, the House will be meeting today to look into and possibly pass the, the curfew act. So will it be correct to assume that if the curfew act is passed today, there's the likelihood of probably the current state of emergency that is in place will come to an end this week or probably as, as early as tomorrow? The current state of emergency ends this tonight at um, 12 o'clock, midnight? Midnight, yeah. And once we pass the Curfew Act, then the Curfew can remain in place for as long as the government thinks it's imp important and appropriate for it to remain in place. So the Curfew um, could remain in place also, it can end also? Then, um, or everything can be lifted, no. possibility also? That is a possibility, but let me put it this way. Once we pass the Curfew Act, the state emergency goes away, and then the curfew can remain in place for as long as the government wishes or thinks it's necessary for it to continue. I'm repeating what you said in a different way. <laughs> okay. Um, not trying to preempt anything, but was a discussion in place um, relating to a variant of the current curfew time. Should that um, be the case where the state of the emergency goes away and the curfew act kicks in? Um, yeah, we had some discussions, but we won't be able to make a statement about that until the curfew act is in place, until the end of cabinet meeting today. Just a follow-up. Um, there, there are mixed views currently about the current curfew that is in place. Um, are you aware? There is a feeling that um, the current time that has been set is affecting some sectors of the economy, particularly um, restaurants and certain places that usually um, have dinner guests, etc. Have you heard such sentiments? Well, we have heard those sentiments. We have heard some people think that it should be later. And so there are very different views as whether the coffee should remain in place or how long it should be. And so these matters we will consider after, as soon as we've completed the um, cabinet, sorry, the House of Assembly matter dealing with the Coffee Act. Thank you. 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 Thank you.
Good morning uh, from Eric Governor. Connor Devitt with the Beacon newspaper. Uh, I just have a question about shelters. Uh, we visited the Francis Let Some Shelter in East End on Sunday, and there was about 40 residents there that seemed convinced that they were going to be asked to leave uh, shortly. I'm just curious if you know the fate of those residents, uh, which shelters are still operational, and if you'd like to talk, either of you would like to talk about the overarching plan for uh, the residents that still are residing in shelters. The, um, I know that there are still some persons who are in the shelter at Long Loop. I also know that it is, um, from a policy point of view, we'd like to see persons become rehabilitated as far as living quarters outside the shelters as, as soon as possible. What has happened now, the, the residents in shelters, the number of people in shelters has reduced considerably as um, people have moved in with family or friends and found other areas of accommodation and some people have actually moved away. So that has reduced considerably the number of people in shelters. We have to continue to work on a plan to make sure that all the people in shelters are satisfactorily placed in accommodation that is suitable. In the time frame, of course, that, is, that depends on how soon we can out get all that accomplished, but that is a work in progress. So just to clarify, then, the people that were residing in Francis Letsom were not asked to leave that shelter, or were they? Let me put it this way, I am not aware that they have been asked. Are you aware of that? No. Yeah. We know the importance of the station of the House of Assembly today and to pass the Curfew Act. And um, I believe, sir, you are also aware of the importance of the people of the Virgin Islands knowing its outcome and to hear the debate. But it's unfortunate, sir. I don't know at what point this decision was made to have the House of Assembly and to have this act debated, or this curfew act debated. But it's unfortunate the people in Virgin Islands will not be hearing the debate. The reason being is that it will not be on ZB via radio. So isn't this of concern to you of such an important act will not be heard by the people in the Virgin Islands could you explain why, or is it that something, because we have been here in the House of Assembly on the 23rd, we only knew of it yesterday. Isn't this a concern to you that the people will not be fully informed or probably hear the actual debate of what was happening on the Coffee, the coffee Act? Well, you caught me by surprise. I thought that um, the BBI would be covering the event. No, sir. We, were to, um, we actually knew yesterday evening. We were told the 23rd or the 24th. So you weren't able to get up to speed no, in such a short time. Yeah. But we will make sure that the session is recorded, so that it could be immediately played back on ZBVI and other radio stations. Uh, Renee Williams from Vino, uh, in a case where persons are not insured uh, to rebuild, what are plans that government will do to assist those persons? Um, we essentially would like to see all people, all persons who reside in the BVI have some sort of satisfactory accommodation. I know right now it's challenging and um, through the Ministry of Health and Social Development, we'll be looking at all possible ways of helping to house people satisfactorily. Um, there has been uh, many layoffs um, because of business being damaged. Um, what is the government's plan for unemployment in the territory right now? We appreciate that there would have been some layoffs because essentially many of the services, many of the businesses have been closed for some time. And look at some of the hotels, for example, like um, the bitter end is gone, so there would have been layoffs. So we have to try to increase the economic activity in the country in order to be able to absorb these people. Right? And that is one of the reasons why we have introduced um, some customs relief so that persons will be encouraged, businesses, will be encouraged to start up again as soon as possible. And that is why we are having discussions with businesses. I've been doing that during the past week, um, urging them to do so and discussing whatever other assistance they may be able to discuss with government 
And that is why we are actually have started meeting with all the persons in the hotel sector to find out you know, where they are in the rebuilding program and how government can assist them to get there as quick as possible. Can I just follow up on what you said about meeting with persons in the hotel sector? Um, your the Ministry of Health and Tourism, um, thinking of all that has happened and what you've heard initially, what would you say is the medium term um, outlook for the tourism industry of the territory? There are several aspects to the tourism industry. There's the cruise industry, and um, when we look at the cruise industry, I, we observe that the cruise dock, for example, is not being damaged, and therefore, from that point of view, you know, they, um, there's no reason why the ships cannot come. But then we have to look at the overall country and what we have to offer to our um, visitors, and that is why it is important that we do the, the cleanup that is ongoing, continues and, and be efficient. And this is why we want all people in the BVI, all people in our community, to con do their best to help in the cleanup effort, clean up around your own surroundings and also on the public roads and so that is important. If we do that, then we'll be able to be ready to receive visitors and cruise visitors when they come. We are hoping that this could start before the end of the year. We're hoping, but this is a discussion, of course. We have to have the cruise lines, and the Minister of, the Minister of Communications has been the one who is leading those discussions, and he'll be able to report further on that. In the, um, in the yachting sector, we know that there's been significant um, damage to in the yachting sector, but we also know that, um, having spoken with some individuals in that sector, that they're eager to get back into business. And some have told me that uh, certainly by December, they expect to start business again. What is important for the um, yachting sector is that there be sufficient attractions in the BVI for them. As you recall, when someone comes to a holiday for maybe seven days, they would have different sites around the Virgin Islands to visit. And so what we do, we're speaking with persons who are involved in those sites, for example, like Norman Island, so you can get those sites back up and running. So the visitors, when they come on the yacht, they'll have that same experience that they had before. Uh, just to just sum up what you said, Premier, you said you're hoping you're still having this question. Considering that we're approaching the season, do you think if, if we can't all pull together in terms of the cleanup and these other little areas you mentioned, that it might result in a major tourism loss to the territory this year, or you're not ready to no, we're not showing any gloves. I was going to continue to say that, um, so there's two sectors. The other sector, of course, is the hotel sector. And we know that there's been substantial damage to that, right? And so there will definitely be a loss because of the damage to the hotel sector. I mean, if you look at um, Little Dick's Bay, look at Bitter End and so, right? But again, on Total Pitic and on Virgin Gorda, a substantial amount of the rooms Accommodations for guests is in villas, and so they will be able to rebuild as quickly as possible as well. It, I believe that um, most of these villas would have been insured and should be able to get back on their feet much more quickly than a large hotel would be, or even start in a new hotel. So while I can see an immediate loss because of the, um, especially, especially particularly in the hotel sector, I am. Um, I'm more optimistic, and I believe that we can um, work in together. We can get back over you know, in, you know, in in you know good time. Certainly not in pie. And as I said, from the hotel sector, that is um, we have to have those discussions, and it, and to see what the interest is and how long it will take for them to get back up. Premier or Governor, uh, just a quick clarification on the overall fatality count. I've heard that. Number of government officials say it was five, but DDM's reports seem to indicate it was four. Do we know what the official number is at this point? The, the official number we've stated is five. It's five. It's, it's, it's Despite the so. difference in the DDM, so five is what we should be reporting. Uh, so, so I haven't seen a difference in DDM report, but DDM colleagues are here afterwards, so we can okay. we can have that conversation directly with them. But five is is what we've confirmed. Uh, very sadly, is the official count. And then just a quick follow-up. I'm just wondering if there's any progress on determining the number of displaced persons in the territory. I know that's a difficult metric, 
Um, that is ongoing work as well. That, as you say, it's a difficult metric, but um, it parts on job. But that work is, is, is ongoing. I think we're close to a, a figure, but um, I wouldn't want to say that until I'm sure that the work is complete. But just to clarify that, that includes people that are living with families that they wouldn't be normally living with, uh, people living anywhere that, that they wouldn't normally be living after the it, storm. Yes. It's person. Okay. Yeah. Governor, you said about the bulk of the military officials are leaving. I will be leaving very soon. But as some leave, others are coming. I, other officers are coming. I believe um, Cayman Island police officers, some left, some have arrived. Yes. When do you, do you think, it may be difficult to say give an actual time when this will end. When or uh, what, where are you hoping to end all of this? When you have a timeline in like when you think of no more UK military officers, no more help from Bombay, allow the Cayman Islands and allow the police officers to continue local police officers, you have um, looking forward to some time to that, a date or a month? Yeah, so f first off, uh, just again to restate, mm -hmm. huge thanks to, to both UK military and to other overseas territories, Cayman and Bermuda as well, sent officers down. The task wasn't just on security, that was one of the early priorities that the Premier and I asked the military to be involved in, but actually the task has been much wider, uh, clearing streets, helping work alongside local authorities on, on infrastructure, and it's made a dramatic difference uh, here in terms of, of improving uh, the state of, of the territory. The aim always is, though, that uh, to get back as quickly as possible to, to normal business. Uh, Commissioner and I are talking very closely about the plan of what that looks like for policing. We've reached a point in infrastructure where BVI Electricity Corporation, others are, are taking forward a lot of the work and have always been, and the military support to that, which was always a, an initial response rather than an ongoing uh, basis now now takes more of a, a, a step back but I estimate there's a while while we need to build back the, the police force to, to full capability and Commissioner later I'm sure can talk about uh, the impact it had on on the police force but it was the same as, as many many of the places and many of the services across the territory lots of the stations were hit lots of the communications were hit and uh, there's a, there was a need to get more officers in as well as equipment in. That's going to take still a few weeks uh, and I hope that you know we will return to to having BBI uh, police officers or Virgin Islands police officers as they are now leading the force and increasingly um, being the sort of the the, the continuing uh, base of, of Virgin Islands police. Finally for me, rebuilding infrastructure is very important and rebuilding business um, government infrastructure and security infrastructure, particularly police, is very important. The police force, the building has been damaged. Um, what are your intentions are as regards and for both headquarters and they have been damaged? Mm -hmm. What intentions are in getting um, that up and running in quick time in the interest of the police? Yes, uh, so in the, in Perry and I have discussed this uh, as well. There's an overall recovery plan which, which you know, going through all of the sectors of areas that we need to address. Security is one of the critical ones in that, not just the police force, but also uh, Minister Warwin is looking at the prison as well, where uh, we talked previously about uh, the state of, of the prison and what happened during the storm. It's a priority to rebuild that, but we've got to look at all of the priorities uh, and work out you know, where we focus on um, uh, next. But security and rebuilding the police force is, is definitely um, one of those areas that we'll be focusing on. Um, you mentioned the prison uh, just now. We know some of the prisoners were transferred to St. Lucia. You did say it might be a priority, but we don't know how soon and what level will be to rebuild the prison. So would you be able to say how long those prisoners are going to be residing in St. Lucia? Yes, yeah, so we, we transferred uh, uh, agreement with the, the well, Minister Warwin and uh, all of Cabinet. Uh, we transferred 21 prisoners to St. Lucia. I'm very grateful to St. Lucia for their offer of support. The prison took a hit during the storm uh, and actually we need some time to rebuild it into a fit place for prisoners to be in and also a secure place for the community um, uh, more widely. That's going to take a few months. Uh, we're working on that plan now. I estimate in a region of about six to nine months, but uh, we, that's something that we are prioritising again to get the prison 
uh, both for the prisoners who are there to make sure it's a fit place for them to be in and then, as I said, make sure it's a safe place for the community more largely. Let's take one more question. Just a photo of um, Is there any plans to send any more prisoners to St. Lucia? So we, we uh, always, we have the ability to do prisoner transfers if we need. We did an initial set of transfers. Um, at the moment, the, the prisoner is in a state where it's, it's secure and the rewarding plans uh, can commence. But uh, yeah, uh, that, to me, seems a sensible position at the moment. If situations change, then obviously our you know, position may change. But uh, the minister and I, who talk very closely about that, will keep it under review uh, constantly. We'll take, we'll take, make an exception. One more question. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, I'm just, we, we've been hearing some stories of, of landlords um, violating the rights of their tenants or violating the, the conditions of their lease uh, after this, these storms. I know that your government premier has, has gone out and said that that's something that you, uh, like, you condemn and that you don't want to happen, but what, what should a tenant do? What recourse do they have if they're in a situation where they feel like their landlord is violating the, the rights of their lease? Do they do they knock on the door of the Ritter building? Do they contact their district representative? Like what, what's, the, what's the next step for them? They can contact the district representative, yes. But they can also contact the, the Department of Health and Social Welfare, which right now has responsibility for housing. And um, they can also contact um, their friends or legal representatives. Thank you very much. Um, right now, the premier would like to make a presentation, I think, to the, to the military. Premier, please. Yes, yeah, so the premier and I have decided to slightly break with uh, uh, full protocol, but uh, because of the we're so grateful for the, the contribution of the UK uh, military. Uh, the Premier would like to, to make a few words and also to present um, an honour to, to the, uh, on, well, for the whole of the task force, but Premier. In recognition of the um, work and the assistance, which is so necessary, that the UK military has been given to the BVI, we thought it would be appropriate to government to give to them on behalf of Colonel Maynard, Colonel Paul Maynard, right?